<laughs> oh, these cats are so hilarious. Wait. What's this? Why? Let's talk about this. Okay, so just recently I've seen videos and articles claiming VR is dead or dying, and not just from other content creators, but also from mainstream media. Now, Drifter's video was one of many, and to be fair to Drifter, despite the title and the thumbnail, he does make some valid points in his video, but none that substantiate the claim that VR is dying. It does feel a bit like this being part of the VR community sometimes. Stand down. Hey, hey! What did I just say? Delta! I see you. Back up. Okay. Good. Good. So today I wanted to throw my hat into the ring and give you my thoughts on the matter from someone that's been very fortunate enough to have tried pretty much every VR headset available. But before we do that, let's get up some gameplay and talk about the facts. Since the consumer release of VR headsets such as the Rift, the Vive, Windows MR and PSVR, the hardware sales have steadily increased, albeit at a bit of a slow burn. This is based on the Steam hardware stats and the little official information we know in terms of sales. PSVR is the current forerunner at 3 million headsets sold since launch, as stated by Sony in August 2018. The PC players haven't been so forthcoming with stats, but estimates suggest selling just over 1 million headsets between them. Despite the relatively low numbers in sales, I'm optimistic about the future of virtual reality. Now you could say that I'm biased as I'm invested in the technology and it's in my best interest for VR to succeed as a channel that solely creates VR content. But hear me out. I see many gamers out there, including myself, investing in bigger TVs, higher resolution monitors, high-end headphones and other gaming accessories. And we all do this because we want to feel more immersed, we want to feel more connected to the games that we're playing. And I know gamers have been sold many gimmicks over the years, but I can tell you now there's nothing more immersive than being in the game itself. I think many gamers out there who are on the fence about VR or dismiss it generally have never tried it, or the little experience they've had with it has been something like a, a roller coaster using a Google Cardboard. Please, Please, people out there, stop giving roller coaster demos to VR newcomers. Motion sickness is a thing and can be really off putting for people trying VR for the first time. So, please, when you're giving demos, bear that in mind. One thing I found during my time using VR and demoing it to people myself is that even those that regularly watched VR content on YouTube didn't have any idea that the image in the headset is 3D and actually has depth to it. And this is another problem for the industry to solve, and thankfully there's tools like Live that exist, so games can be recorded in a mixed reality view, which really portrays well that a player is actually in the game, like I'm showing you right now. Some of the best experiences I've had in VR isn't about what the game looks like, but how the game makes you feel empowered as a player. Games like Superhot, Lone Echo and Beat Saber are great examples of this. And on top of that, there's an amazing feeling of presence when in multiplayer and social applications. Experiences like VR chat and Oculus Rooms are so powerful as it really feels like other people are around you. Already right now, this is an amazing way to connect with friends and loved ones remotely. And I recall hearing a story some time ago where a deaf couple who lived apart were using big screen to watch movies together with subtitles and would communicate using sign language using the touch controllers. And this is just a small glimpse at how VR can impact people's lives for the better. As incredible as I think VR is, I do know the industry has its own problems. I know that a big barrier for VR is accessibility. Even if you're interested in buying a VR headset right now, getting your hands on one to try it out can be tricky. 
Now, VR isn't well represented in retail stores. Despite being commercially available for over two years now, VR headsets are still being displayed behind glass cabinets, with very few stores offering demos. VR arcades are booming in Asia and are really assisting the uptake of VR there. If you want to try out VR before taking the plunge yourself, I would suggest looking up a local VR arcade, trying it at a friend's house, or booking a demo in advance at your local store. Another barrier to entry is simply the cost, and I totally get that. The price of a high-end PC and a PC VR headset is expensive. The middle ground being a PSVR, with the barrier of entry just being a PS4. But despite the high-end market being relatively small, we still have companies investing huge sums of money into developing ultra-high-end headsets, such as the Pimax and the Xtel, for example. We even had recent rumours that Valve are making a headset of their own. Right now, we're in the early steps of VR. We're like in the Atari-era equivalent of traditional gaming. And just like any new technology, adoption will be slow and needs iterations and improvements before taking off in the mainstream. Most manufacturers that have a vision for mass adoption are working hard on accessibility and price at the forefront of their product design. 2019 is going to be the year of the standalone headset, where no PC will be required and it will be selling at an affordable price. Even before any of these headsets have released, the competition is already heating up between Oculus, Google and HTC with the Quest, Daydream and Vive focused headsets. Standalone will also have an impact on the adoption of PC VR, as people will get a taste of what true VR is like and invest in having the best possible experience on PC. Of course, hardware is nothing without great content. Content is king. It's a chicken and egg scenario. We need AAA developers on board to excite players to jump into VR. However, the player base is still so small that AAA devs don't find it makes financial sense. Some hardware manufacturers like Oculus and Sony are funding a lot of the bigger titles for platform exclusivity so devs don't take the huge financial hit themselves. And while I'd prefer an open VR without exclusivity, I understand the need for this in a growing market like this. We're also starting to see a thriving competitive scene in VR with games such as Onward, Echo Arena and Echo Combat, which will only grow in time. Competitive players of the future will not only need to have fast reflexes, but also the physicality to back it up. Gaming aside, I feel VR is most powerful when used for education, rehabilitation, social and training applications. For example, I recently learned how to assemble an engine in virtual reality, and I got to experience firsthand the sinking of the Titanic, and I learned these things through my experiences. This is something far more engaging than simply reading about a topic in a book, and it's clear that VR will play an important role in these industries in the future. So we're a long way off Ready Player One, yes I agree but I see a future where VR and AR devices become something people use every day, just like their smartphones. If you're intrigued by VR, but don't have the budget for a high-end PC with a PC VR headset such as the Rift, Vive or Windows MR, my advice to you would be go out and try a PSVR if you own a PlayStation, or hold out until the standalone headsets release next year. With the upcoming standalone headsets, and PC VR headsets being reduced in price and more competition coming to the marketplace, I think it's going to be an exciting year for VR indeed. So there we have it. VR isn't dead or dying. In my opinion, it's alive and well and looking more vibrant than it's ever been. Sure, I admit the industry has a long way to go, but there's no turning back now. And whether you like it or not, VR is here to stay. Let me know what you think either way in the comments below. I'd love to know your thoughts. Leave a like if you like this video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.